The University of Wisconsin system has a high profile uh, direct assessment uh, competency based program. I think it's pretty small though, I think 1,200, 1,500 students right now. Um, but they have an a online little ad for it, and I think it's called FlexPath. Mm -hmm. um, I, it does a great job of explaining this in 30 seconds. I, I, I really, I, it's worth checking out, actually. Um, so let's briefly, before we open up to questions, talk about the regulatory side. Um, believe it or not, we're in Washington. This is an issue that is actually bipartisan. There, there's a bipartisan bill to, to create a demonstration project around competency-based ed. It seems that the past administration really liked competency-based ed. It seems like this one is, is not going to at least stop it on the interest and maybe, <laughs> maybe encourage it once they kind of staff up. Um, but what, what would you like to see Washington do and accreditors do to, to both preserve quality, pr protect it, but to also encourage this, the growth in this field? Any, anyone? Any, any, I know this is not a simple question. but Sure. Uh, I'll, I'll start with this one. Um, I think you know, the question has always been, what do we as taxpayers want to pay for? And, and up until now, it's been instruction. Um, and I think with competency-based education, it starts a conversation around, it, should, we, should we be paying for instruction or should we be paying for outcomes? Should we be paying for what a student knows and can do? Um, so when you, you change the paradigm to, to focus on that, things like regular and substantive interaction don't seem as important because the reason why that exists is to make sure that students are getting instruction. Can, can you briefly explain that? If you, <laughs> briefly? Uh, yeah, it's not easy. Um, so regular and substantive interaction is a, a statute that um, differentiates uh, distance learning uh, from correspondence education uh, and has to do with whether or not the faculty member is regularly interacting with the student. I mean, it has to be faculty uh, instigated. And just briefly on that, so the, the Office of Inspector General at the U.S. Department of Education has been auditing Western Governors University, which is obviously the big fish here, um, on the regular and substantive issue. And if they find that they're not operating under the statutes, they might label it as a correspondence course provider, which would be very bad. And for, for, for WGU, okay, yeah. and would have would require them actually to pay back some of the federal aid they've received over the years. So this is a very hot, delicate issue right now, and a lot of folks are wondering where the kind of regulatory side will go on competency-based education. You know, it's it's hard because I'm I'm torn. Honestly, I you know I'm really interested in new models. I think there are serious issues with the current ones. And I'm aware that there's this rush to the bottom whenever there's a loophole. And so I do believe that the amount of money at stake is so huge that you do have to deal with fraud and abuse. You have to try to prevent it. At the same time, whenever I hear somebody say, well, I don't know, you know, direct assessment, that sounds pretty fishy. And I think, oh, an indirect assessment is okay with you? Like, you know, <laughs> that we never question the status quo. And I think with the level of scrutiny that it deserves to be. 